Hi, welcome to Crafty Little Things. I'm Andrea and today I'm going to do um, Hexagon 19 from the Big and Little Crochet series. Um, if you're still a subscriber and you're not sure what you're doing or you just want someone to crochet along with, then welcome. Um, if, you're, if you haven't got the Big and Little books but you'd like to learn some techniques or you're practicing your crochet, you're a beginner or whatever, then join in with me again. Um, these can be made in any colour, you can use any yarn, any hook, it's entirely up to you. Um, I'm obviously, uh, with the subscription, you get the yarns and the materials you need to make um, each of the hexagons, which then go together to make this beautiful throw um, eventually. So we're on to... Um, I'm on to book 21 but I'm a little bit behind so I'm just doing 19 and then I've got 20 and 21 to do. Here's hexagon 18 that I made earlier. Um, it's beautiful that one, very simple but very pretty. And now for this one I need the 4mm hook that comes with the subscription and then I need some rose yarn which is this colour which I've got some left over. You get the yarn with the books um, and I've got quite a bundle of it now. Um, but I'm going to use the rose yarn, leftover river and leftover petrol. Right, so river, the leftover river, this is the river, yeah this is the river colour. I don't think that piece is going to be big enough for anything, so I'll leave that aside. Not for this one. It might be big enough for another project, because it might be the starting circle in another one of the hexagons. And some leftover petrol, which I've got We'll get there. started then. So we're going to make a magic loop using the petrol. So how I make my magic loop is I, and I do have beginners videos on this channel, there's a playlist full of absolute beginners and there'll be one that just shows you how to make the magic loop and what I suggest is that you just do it over and over and over and over again until you know what you're doing. But basically though, um, I'm just going to lay the yarn over my two fingers and then I cross it over and secure it holding my third finger. I put my hook under the first strand of yarn pull through the second, give it a little twist to keep it on my hook and then I just put my hook under that second strand again and just pull it through to make a little slidey knot, take my fingers out and there I have my magic loop which I can shorten by pulling on my straggler. Let me just pull my straggler out, it's got wrapped up in there, doesn't matter but so this is my loop on my hook here, this is my magic circle or my magic ring or my magic loop, this is my straggler, the short piece, and this is my working yarn, the long piece. Okay. So if I pull on my working yarn, that'll just tighten up the loop on my hook, and if I pull on my straggler, it'll tighten up my circle. Okay, so what I want to be doing is chaining two, so yarn over, and pull through the loop on your hook, yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook. And then I want to put 11 double crochet into the ring. Now a double crochet in the UK is a single in US and all it is is you pop your hook into your ring. I might just zoom in so you can see what I'm doing a bit better. Pop your hook into the ring grab some yarn from your working yarn and you've got two loops on your hook okay so you pull that back through let me just do that again so you put your hook into the circle grab some yarn pull it through the circle so now we've got two loops on your hook yarn over and pull through those two loops on your hook so hook into the ring pull through some yarn yarn over and pull through those two on your hook okay and then you just do that for 12. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, tw
12 stitches in total around so if you were to go back and count the you have a little v-shape here that shows you that you've got a stitch here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve yeah so I'll pop my hook into that top one pop it in when you go into your stitch you just want to push under those two strands you see those two strands just push under there, that's where you want to pull your yarn through and then pull it through the loop on your hook. And that's a slip stitch. And now what you do is you chain four, so yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook four times. Two, three, four. And then you want to do a treble and a chain eleven times. So what this four stitches are acting, four chains are acting as, is a treble stitch, which is a double in the US, and a chain one. So what you want to do is yarn over, go to your next stitch, pop your hook in, pull some yarn through, so you've got three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then chain one. So you've got your stitch and a chain one. Yarn over, go into the next one, pull some yarn through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and chain one. And just do that all the way around. <laughs> Can you hear my puppies squeaking? My my dog dogs had puppies. I would say my dog had puppies because they both did because they're the mum and the dad. It was such an emotional, beautiful evening. She had them. She started showing that she was in labour at about uh, one o'clock in the afternoon. She she settled down into her nest that I'd made for her um, and she she more or less stayed there um, she wanted someone to be with her all the time if anybody left the room she was in my office and if anybody left the room she got a little bit upset so we stayed with her everybody came down and we took it in turns to sit with her and stroke her and keep her company and then about just before 11 o'clock at night she started to have contraction you know she started to push and um the first baby was born within about five minutes and then she had five within like an hour. She was very quick. She had a break between number two and three and between three and four. Three seemed to be the one she had the hardest time with. Um, it what, But even that was sort of five pushes as opposed to three. Um, and they were just popping out <laughs> and it was just so lovely. And it was just so lovely that it happened on a day that was very sad for us, um, it just cheered us up, so it was really nice. Right, so that was an aside. So <laughs> let me just finish this off then. So yarn over and pull through, and then just snip that off. And just pull it through, and we'll sew that in, in the end. So we've got like a little wheel then, which you've probably seen before. It's classic sort of beginning to um, a shape like this so just check again that you have got your uh, 12 long stitches so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 now normally we would count the stitches by the little V's on the top but with these longer stitches you can count the posts um, that makes it a little bit easier for some people to just count the post of the stitch so now for the next stitch then we're going to join the rows and I'm sp suppose we can join it into any of these spaces so put your hook into one of the spaces don't put it into the stitch and then pull through your yarn drop the straggler and just make a chain so now I'm going to chain four one two 
three, four. And then I'm going to do two double treble clusters. Now, if you're not sure what a double treble cluster is, it'll tell you here in the abbreviations of the um, book. So a double treble cluster is yarn over twice, insert hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, two loops twice. So we're going to do a double treble cluster. So we're going to yarn over twice. One, two. We're going to put our hook in. We're going to pull up a loop. We're going to yarn over and pull through two loops. Yarn over and pull through two loops again. And then we're going to yarn over twice, put into, put a hook in, pull through a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through all three on the hook. Okay? Did you get that? So we're going to double triple cluster twice. And then I think we're going to chain three between um, those. So chain three, then yarn over twice, and now we're going to treble, double treble cluster. <laughs> so yarn over twice into the next space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So you've got two on your hook. Yarn over twice, into your space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So you've got three on your hook, yarn over twice, into your space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through all four, and then chain three. Okay. I think we've got that right. So yarn over twice into the next space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over twice into the space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over twice into the space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through all four and then chain three. Chain three, and then just join to the top of that chain four and fasten off. Right, so for the next round then, which is round four, we're gonna join the river yarn, which is this one. So, I'm, and we're going to join it into any of these spaces. So I'm going to put my hook in, grab my yarn, pull it through. Oops, a bit long that. Grab a loop of my yarn and pull it through. Keep hold of my straggler and my working yarn and pull them through the loop on the hook. And then let my straggler drop off. Okay. And I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. Now that three is going to act as a treble in UK terms, a double in US terms. And then I'm going to put another two doubles into the same space. So yarn over, hook into the space, pull up some yarn. So you've got three on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, hook into the space, pull up some yarn. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And now what we're going to do is we're going to work three... Um, trebles doubles in the US into the next three chain space but we're not going to do anything in between so we're not going to 
be chaining it or anything in between. So yarn over, straight into that one then, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, into that space, do your treble or double in the US. And there you've got, so now you've got that first chain three which is acting like a treble or a double. Um, so you've got three there, three there, and now into the next one, what you want to do is three trebles. So one, two, three. And now we're creating one of our corners. So we chain three to give us that corner space. And then we put three more in that same space. Okay. Two three in the same space and that gives us a corner so you can see from the picture that we have a corner a group of three and another corner so our next set would be a group of three into the next chain space so one two and three and then in the next space, we do a corner. So we pop in three trebles, doubles in the US. And then we chain three. One, two, three. And we pop in three again in the same space. Daniel. Yeah. Are you going somewhere? Yeah. And then we just carry on like that. So we have three, a corner, three, a corner, three, a corner. Three. And then we do our chain three and then we finish off. So one, two. Some people will chain three and then slip stitch and somebody will use some people will use the slip stitch as their final stitch whichever you want to slip stitch into the top of this original chain three okay i find that if you do your slip stitch as your last stitch of your chain three it just makes it better keeps the shape better the pattern tells you to chain three i think yeah, the pattern tells you to chain three, but add chain two and use the slip stitch. If you look, it gives you a much more even corner. So there we go. We've definitely got that hexagon shape now. So now we're finished with that yarn. So now we're going to add the petrol yarn and we're going to add it to any corner space. So corner spaces are these ones, as you can see, with the two sets in each of them. So I'm going to add it to this one. <clears throat> Sometimes I tie on my yarn, but I'm showing you a different way today. So I'm just putting my hook in, getting a loop of my yarn, pulling it through the space. Yarn over with both the straggler and the working yarn. I made a hash of that, didn't I? <laughs> Put that in. So you've got your straggler and your working yarn there. Pull those through the loop, through the space. Yarn over with the straggler and the working yarn and pull those both through to give that a nice secure attachment. And now what we're going to do is we're going to chain two and then we're going to do one double crochet into the same space, I'm assuming. So hook in, pull through yarn over and pull through both of the loops on your hook. That's a single crochet in the US, double crochet in the UK. Sorry, that was just a little bit loose, that. So into the space, pull through some yarn, yarn over and pull through two. And now a double crochet in each of the next nine stitches. 
So our nine stitches are here. If we start from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So our first stitch is there. Pull a hook in, pull some yarn through, yarn over, pull through. It's one. Next stitch, two. Next stitch, three. Next stitch, four. Next stitch, five. Next stitch, six. Next, seven, eight, and nine. Bring us to the last stitch there. And now we're into the corner space. So into the corner space, you put two double crochets. So hook in, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Hook in, pull through some yarn, yarn over, pull through two. One chain and then two more um, double crochet. So yarn over, I mean, so hook in, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Hook in, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So there you've got your little corner sequence, okay? Two double crochets or single crochets in the US, a chain, and then two more double or single crochets. And then one into every nine of the stitches across. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, and that brings us to the corner again. So we put two double crochet or single crochet in the US in there, two chains and then two more double crochet or single crochet in the US and then we go back along there again. And then we're back into the corner again. So what we want to do in the corner is two double crochets, singles in the US, chain two and slip stitch into the top of that one. And again, if you want, you can just chain one and use your slip stitch as the second one. And then we just slip that off. And there we go. Done. That's our 20th hexagon. That's really pretty. I think we've got one that's similar to this already. And once that, I mean, you can block it, but once it's edged and it's sewn into the blanket, it's going to look fabulous. Can you see here, this court, this space here looks bigger, and that's because I did the three spaces and then joined with the slip stitch. Whereas on the others, on this round, they all look the same. So that's that's just what I was talking about. It's not something you'd really gonna notice you'd probably notice yourself but somebody else probably wouldn't even notice it. Okay. So that's eighteen and nineteen that's done stitch. then. Oh, yeah, look. It looks massive though, doesn't it? <laughs> but anyway, that's that. So join me next for the number twenty and number twenty one and um like I said I'll be doing some other bits and bobs in between as well. Okay, take care. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.